We know how to harness the power of the wind with these giant windmills, but what about if we could use the wind generated by cars on the road? So what if we just take the same concept of windmills and make it on a smaller scale and put it on the freeway so when a car drives by, it'll turn the little windmill? Would it work? To see if we can generate power from the extra wind from vehicles on the road, let's make ourselves a mini turbine. To make an electric generator, you just need two main components, magnets and coils of wire. So first I'll set these magnets alternating the north and south poles, and then stick them to this disc. Then I'm going to place four coils of wire in these slots and twist the ends together so they're all electrically connected together. Then I'll hook the magnets on a stick that can spin in the center. And then I'm going to curve these plastic sheets so it'll catch the wind. And when it does, it'll cause the magnets to spin. And when the magnets spin, it will make electricity flow through the wires and I can generate a voltage. Now I've hooked an LED on the wind turbine. Let's blow some air on it and see if it works. It works. Look at the LED light up. So I made my own little mini wind turbine. Now let's head out to the road and see if cars driving by can actually turn this. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to move. And nothing's happening. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's too far away from the car, so let's climb over the barrier and stick it right by the side of the road. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. It's working. Look how much it turns when those big semis come by. It's spinning really fast. It's actually working way better than I thought it would. I didn't think there'd be enough wind to actually turn this. So we can definitely generate electricity just by using the wind from cars. But there's a few problems that I can already tell by trying this. The first problem we saw at the start, to turn the generator, it has to be pretty close to the cars. And also the cars need to be going pretty fast. If they're not going fast enough, it won't turn the generator. So that means you need high speed cars right next to the turbine. You can imagine that might be a little bit dangerous, but that hasn't stopped a few companies from making these mini traffic turbines that can harvest the wind energy from traffic on the road. But there could be another issue that we're forgetting. The energy to turn these turbines are ultimately coming from the cars themselves. So we're not just getting free power, but we're taking it from the cars. The question is then, is a traffic turbine actually making the cars less efficient? Well, the goal of a turbine is to take fast moving air and take the kinetic energy from it and turn it into electricity. In doing that, it slows down the air. So on a busy road, all the cars are moving forward, pushing air along with them. But then these turbines slow that air down so the cars now have an extra resistance pushing against them. So would there actually be a noticeable difference if there's a turbine on the side of the road? Well, let's test it out. In order to test this, we need a way to ignore all other types of friction besides air resistance. So I'm going to be using my superconductor levitating on a magnetic track. So the only resistance that is felt is air resistance. And I have the track tilted up on one end a little bit, and I can let the superconductor go and it'll fall down the track and make it back up as far as it can and then fall back down if it doesn't make it all the way around. Kind of in a pendulum motion here. Then this red fan is going to simulate the air that's flowing from all the cars on the road, continually pushing the air forward on the road. Then I'll have some large turbines on the side of the road that I can stick here or take them off when I want. Turn on our airflow. So now we got a lot of traffic on the road and I'm going to start it up top here. You can see because of that extra kick of air, it barely gets around the track. But now I'm going to set up my wind turbines and I'll start at the exact same spot on the track. I can't quite get around. Now, take the turbines off, start it at the same spot, and it can make it around. That's because the air is bouncing off of those turbines and causing a little more air resistance for the superconductor, and so it can't get back up around the track. But as soon as I take those turbines off again and restart it at the same spot, then it can make it around the track. So there's definitely some extra resistance just by adding those turbines on the side of the track. 
But the question is, does this extra tiny little bit of resistance matter? Because you'll notice to simulate the turbines, I just placed a plastic piece by the side of the road. So that means it doesn't have to be a turbine. It could be a tree or a post or a traffic barrier. So the turbines wouldn't decrease efficiency of the traffic any more than anything on the side of the road, even a person standing there. So from this experiment, we can tell that yes, they do reduce the efficiency of the cars a tiny little bit, but it's probably not enough to matter. But the thing is, to generate any significant amount of power, you need a lot of these turbines, like thousands and millions of them. And not only would that be super expensive to install everywhere, but also if these are everywhere on the side of the road, then maybe that tiny little resistance that it adds might add up. So for me, I don't think I'll be investing in the future of traffic turbines. What about you? And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you next time.